In this session I'm going to give you an overview of the Botsford CAD CAM Design Tools Lathe software and how it can be used at different levels for different uh, learners abilities. I'm going to start by doing the, the simple CAD to, CAD to manufacture route. So I'm going to click on the icon here and launch the, the internal CAD package. I'm going to give it a few details about the uh, component that I'm going to design uh, and some sizing information here. If I was using tubular material then I would put an inside diameter here. Uh, I'm going to put a hole in this uh, component so I'm going to put a hole depth of 10. I can work in metric and imperial units as well and I select OK and I'm presented with a, a drawing area here uh, which represents the overall material size that I can design the component in. Uh, I can import into here in both DXF 2D format an STL 3D format you know, from other CAD packages. What we do find is that using the internal CAD package he here teaches some of the disciplines about what can and can't be manufactured uh, on a lathe. So I'm about to use the drawing grid here uh, for speed. Everything I'm about to do I can use by putting coordinates in through some different coordinate entry methods. But just for speed I'm going to use the grid. I'm also going to utilize the coordinate readout up here which has got X diameter and Z. Okay, so I've actually told uh, the pack cap package that I wanted a, a hole and at 10 deep and it's actually started me off at Z minus 10 which is where the rubber band line is starting from. So if I want a 5 diameter hole I just drag the line up to 5 and click select and it fixes the point. You notice how it gets mirrored in the bottom here because everything is revolved on a lathe it must be a mirror so we automatically do that so we're just drawing in the top half. This is where the intelligence in the CAD package helps the user so it knows that this component can't have a hole that's smaller at the front face than it is at the bottom of the hole so it can either be parallel or tapered. So I'm going to do it parallel, I'm going to go up here I'm going to go to X10 because what I want to do here is put a screw thread on this diameter. So I just right click over the horizontal line, convert to thread, put the hand and the pitch. If I don't know my screw pitches then I can click the help, and click the arrow here and we've got a full table of, of screw pitches. So 10 is 1.5. I'll just point out while I'm in here this help is a huge resource for the for the student even to the point that when they come to use the machine you know they can it will lead them to this page and it'll even tell them which number button button to click okay so back to the thread and we want a 1.5 pitch right hand click OK and the screw thread is put onto that diameter we've also got a little dotted line here which represents the minimum undercut that's required to cut that thread it's just a guide because I just need to draw outside that. If I draw through it like that, then when I come to process, the package will say insufficient undercut to cut thread. If you continue, you'll get your component, but you won't have a screw thread put on it. So I just draw outside that. I'm going to go there. Again, the CAD package here knows that a line going in that direction would be invalid, wouldn't be able to manufacture it. So I hit this brick wall here where it won't let me go beyond the vertical or tapered this way. So it's leading the student round to design something that can be manufactured. One thing's worth mentioning at this point is that we're drawing in 2D here. It, it isn't always obvious to the student what the 3D reality is of what they've actually drawn. So at any point, and I'll do it now, they can launch a 3D representation of what they've designed so far. So if I freeze that, you can see that we've got the hole, the screw thread, and what we've designed. So they can flick in and out of this at, at any point. Okay, so I'm going to finish this. I'm going to maybe do a little diameter here. We might sit a bearing on with a little undercut here, a little face here. Okay, everything I've done so far, I've used the left mouse button, which has given me straight lines. If I click the right mouse button, I get arcs, and I can fix the end point, and then I can swing the radius to the correct radius and direction. Okay, if I want to part off, so if I want to cut this component off from the material, then all I do is drag a line down to zero. Again, we can flip back into the 3D representation of what we've done so far. 
Okay, you can go back and refine the design, so you can refine it by moving around. Again, with the constraints of what we can, can and can't be manufactured. If you decide you want some extra points, we can add them in. All the time, it's making sure we've got a continuous closed path, so we don't have to worry about points that don't, uh, don't match up. Okay, so I'm going to put a little groove into that outside diameter. We've also got a few nice uh, uh, little tools, good engineering tools like chamfer tools, taking off the sharp edges and also radius tools. So we'll just radius some of these corners. Okay, and again, so we're happy with that and I'm happy with that as my final design. And again, I can launch back into the 3D render freeze this, I can change the materials, and I can in fact output this to the clipboard uh, and then you can actually incorporate it in some written project work. Uh, if I also rotate the thread, you can see it is a proper screw thread that we put on there. Okay, other nice tools are we can switch on both incremental and absolute dimensioning. And actually, if we move a point, the dimensions will be either added or subtracted dynamically. Okay, so that's the component we want to manufacture. Now I want to turn it into a, a program that we can send to the machine. So we go File, Process the Billet. We select the material from the drop-down list here. And then we click Process. Okay, now I'll just slow that down. So what's happened now is automatically we are building up a, a CNC program here. The system is automatically selecting the correct tool for the correct operation and we're getting a full simulation of the manufacture process. So if we just run that through. We've also got a cycle time building up here. Okay, once that's simulated if we're actually connected to a machine, this now highlights and we could go straight to manufacture. So literally we've gone from design to manufacture in a matter of minutes. If we go back into the simulation, we have a few nice tools so we can zoom in, we can turn on sections so we can see the internals, we can turn on translucency, and then we can rerun the, the simulation. And all this, of course, can be done by each individual student. Normally this application will be installed on a, uh, on a school or institution network, and then each, uh, each learner can spend time um, with the design and the simulation side of the software. Okay, so that's the first level of, of programming. Um, also in this mode, we can actually view the CNC program. If we want to, we don't have to. Uh, but we can look at the program that's being created. There's some comments being put in it, so you can see what each section of the program is actually doing to create the component. But we can't edit anything here, it's just a view. Okay. If we move up a user level, so I'm now going to go up to Advanced User. It's password protected. Uh, and now some icons have now become available to us. So for instance, we have a, an edit icon. Uh, and down here we've got some new icons for creating GNM code programs. So let's just try the, the edit icon. So here we can actually do some editing of the program. So now I can actually go in and change values. And actually this is quite a good place to start learning a little bit about GNM code programming. So we might set the scenario where we want to reduce the cycle time by a couple of seconds. And of course if we're making tens of thousands of these components then there would be a, a cost benefit. So if we actually go and uh, uh, try and change a value, so I'm going to change a value here. Every time we change something we have to re-simulate, so I'm going to change that and actually I've changed it and created an error. So it's actually checking for errors, it's checking that we don't create programs that we try and send to the machine that would cause damage to the machine, so it's stopped me at the line where the problem is, it's told me what the problem is, and now I have to correct it before we can, before we can carry on. So we can edit programs, and we can also create new programs. So if we come down here, we create a new program. Again, we give it some information about the size of the component. 
and then we're presented with a blank GNM code program uh, and the material down here. Now we could start typing codes if we knew what they were. Um, we could turn a little bit of help on here that tells us what codes are available in what column. But we do need quite a lot of programming knowledge to be able to program from this point. An alternative, we've got an intermediate step, which is more process based, is to turn on conversational programming. So this will lead us through building the program up. So it knows we've got an empty program. It knows that we haven't got the tool. So the first thing it's asking is, please select a tool from the, from the list. So we'll select the tool, click finish. We now have a tool brought into the the simulation view and we've got the first few lines of the program automatically created so the tools being called up and in fact the spindle has been set rotate and the feed rate has been set based on the material we selected when we came into the application uh, it now says well what do you want to do next so I'm going to do a, a, a rapid traverse uh, say go to a position a little bit closer to the uh, to the material so I've asked it to go to 261. The readout now says 261. It's moved closer. And if I didn't know anything about GNM code programming, I've now learned that a G00 is a rapid move. Okay. And then the application says, "What would you like to do next?" Well, we're going to do some axi axial cutting. So I'm going to remove some material. It says, "Where's the end point of the material removal going to be?" Okay, and then does it want to be a parallel cut or a tapered cut? Uh, we'll go tapered on this one. And then we click finish. And it has automatically removed that material. It did that in three passes and it's created a very authentic GNM code program. We've used modal programming so it's very efficient and it's a program that you would see on industrial equipment uh, on the, uh, in the workplace. Okay, and we can inter intermingle this with doing just standard programming as well by just typing the, the codes as well. So we can switch in and out from normal programming and conversational programming. So you can see now how the, the application is structured so that we can, different, different learners can have different learning experiences within it. Okay, right at the top of the hierarchical tree is an administrator mode. Uh, now this is where the, uh, the technician or the instructor can access uh, um, um, certain advanced settings. So if we click on administrator, again password protected and normally the files that it writes to are also um, a privilege protected on, on the network where the, in, the application is installed. Um, then we now have access to the tool library. We can actually go in and change tools for instance so the student doesn't have access to this they have access to viewing the library because it's useful to know for instance what drill sizes are available but they can't edit anything but in this level we can so we can change settings we can add new tools uh, we can go into the material cut information and we can change that for individual tools for individual materials or indeed we can create new materials and we can do that by either creating one from the ground up or we can copy an existing one and just alter the settings slightly uh, to create a new material. So it can be personalized for each, each user's uh, application. Okay, so that gives you a very brief overview about how the application uh, knits together, how we can go from just design to manufacture in a matter of minutes or how we can start learning about the GNM code programming through either a process based approach or th through a full line by line programming approach. Thank you for your time.